Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I'm thrilled to be speaking with Roosevelt. He has a brand new record on the way. It is called Embrace, and it is officially releasing on September 22nd. I want to thank you so much for being here, taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here. How are you doing today? What's going on? Yeah, of course. Hey, um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really busy with the tour um in LA already the tour is starting in California but yeah it's been a it's been a couple of weeks if you get the music out and especially after you know being kind of away from everything for a year and kind of focusing on the record it's been it's been great to kind of reconnect with everyone and like especially with the frequency of just putting up a new single every month Right. Um, yeah, it's, it's been really exciting. That's awesome, man. Um, I've had the opportunity to listen to this record probably five or six times at this point. And I'm speaking sincerely when I say that I love it. Like I've been a fan of yours for so long. And it's such a lovely evolution from your past records. It still holds your signature sound, but then you've progressed in a way. Um, so first off, congrats on it right. almost being released. But I want to know how did it all start for you? Like, how did it all start in terms of like this is going to be a new album. Um, I guess uh, I was just at a point where um, the last campaign for Polydance just was so long because we um, we had to reschedule uh, some touring. I think in Europe even twice, um, and then I don't know. It just was at a point where. I was kind of at this decision if I just want to keep going or if I want to, you know, maybe just live for a while and be away from it. Sure. And actually, actually, I tried to move away from it for a bit because I think it's always good to get some perspective on it and um, just kind of reflect on on kind of what's what's happened because this, yeah, this last campaign for Polydance was kind of two and a half years. Yeah. Um, a long time and for one record yeah and then then i was kind of doing nothing and just kind of i don't know just trying to trying to be away from music for a little bit um and the good thing is that just after a few weeks i was i was just kind of really bored by it and i just wanted to sure. continue and I, I i realized that there were these ideas in my head just coming up without you know, just really um, from like a really, I don't know, like a childish kind of like a playful kind of instinct without thinking about it too much. Um, and I think on Polydance, I kind of had this concept of of how the record should sound even before I wrote most of the music for it. Um, I had this like idea, okay, this should be this like, synth wavy kind of dark um really like beat driven record and i had like the visuals in my head and um i think for this record it just felt way more open and way more like i think the dynamic on this record is is wider and um it almost feels more like a mixtape to me because i feel like i allowed myself um just to expand yeah. the sound a bit more um yeah and that's that's how it kind of evolved and um the the uh the title also came from this i mean it was a working title at first but it came from this um this feeling of um why you know asking myself why would you want to hide away from it why would you want to run away from it when sure. this is you know something something you always kind of wanted and something you always worked for and um and this yeah the title embrace was this kind of note to myself where i was like like you should just embrace it and you shouldn't you shouldn't yeah try to hide from 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 what you're doing and yeah the first demos came together early last year i rented out this cabin in um california nice and kind of evolved the first ideas and um that's how it all came together yeah but it was a way more like open and like natural instinctive process sure. i would say compared compared to the record before 
Now it's much better to go that way instead of forcing it. And I also think taking time away from music and feeling like, yeah, I don't want to have to force it. These natural feelings of making music, like it comes through in the music. It feels sincere rather than, okay, it's been a few years. I need to make another record because, you know, the label tells me to. Yeah, absolutely. And I was I was just so happy that this urge to to work on these demos came so natural to me right. rather than, as you just said, this kind of feeling of like, well, I guess I have to. Um, right, right. And, yeah, and e even if it was just two months, um, probably like winter last year after like the final touring period of Polydance um, was ending, even if it was like quite a short period, it just helped me to to get some perspective on it totally. and to, just to kind of see the reasons for me why I want to continue doing it. Absolutely. Um, as someone who writes, records, and produces all their music by themselves, just like you, what are some difficulties that you still continue to come across throughout the recording sessions? Uh, definitely knowing when a song is done, because <laughs> I feel like, uh, I feel like, um, you know, in the more um, traditional process of making a record, you just have a, f a few steps where you, you know, you write a song and then it goes in the studio and then it goes into the mixing process. And then it, it just has different kind of step stones kind of before, before the song is done. And for me, it's, you know, I, I literally sent out the, the mix to, to Zeno, who's my guy who masters the, mastered the record and I literally just sent him sent him the mixes so sometimes I like the um the freedom of you know kind of changing a lyric on the last day before the master deadline and just okay. you know yeah, still yeah. having the freedom of, of, of working on everything the whole time but there are some moments where it just gets a bit you know manic where where, where I sometimes wish there was like a I don't know like a clearer chronology uh in in terms of um uh yeah when when things need needs to be done um right. but yeah i think i think i think i still love the fact that uh, um everything comes from me not because i'm not because i think i'm i'm the best in in everything i mean it's it, it will be strange to assume that you know for example mixing um, there, there wouldn't be someone that that could do it better. But to me, there's so much emotion and so much of of the the emotion that I want to bring across is also in how things sound and um, how 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 everything sits in the mix. Like it's such a part of songwriting to me and how you construct a song that I still don't really want to give it give it away, you know. No, I totally agree. It comes through, I promise. Um, as I mentioned, like I've right. been a, I've been a major fan of you since around 2016 when your debut album came out. I discovered you in a live setting, actually. I was in Barcelona for the Primavera Sound Festival. I think your set oh, yeah. was like four or five in the morning. It, I was with a group of friends and it was like, should we go home? Should we check out this Roosevelt guy? Like, all right, let's just check out a little bit of the set and see what happens. And I'm not joking, like you blew all of our minds. It could have been because it was that late in a festival, <laughs> moment, but it was fantastic. Um, and I feel like you're- Thanks welcome. so much. Yeah. You're very welcome. Your live show has obviously evolved as well. I've seen you over the years. What are some things that you take from past tours and try to sort of like one-up yourself um you know as as time goes on um yeah i mean first of all i i still really remember that show as almost like a turning point in my career because it was that's awesome i mean the 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 guys at primavera really gave me a stage i probably didn't deserve at the time i, I would just not in terms that. Of, don't don't sell yourself i mean short. just <laughs> No, I mean, just in terms of where I was back then, I mean, it was pre-first yeah. album. Yeah. And it was kind of the headline headline slot of the Pitchfork stage. And 
um yeah it, it just it was just one of these moments where you were kicked into a situation where you probably or where i was probably like super nervous about sure. and only in hindsight i realized how important that moment was to me because we didn't play festivals this size i'm back yeah, then I'm sure know? and that's, um that's amazing yes yeah so i i just wanted to say i that's still like you know in in my top five shows i would say oh well, um i am so happy but, um, there and seen it <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 also funny how many people been at that show. You know, I, I feel like 2016 Primavera. Yeah, a lot of people just been there. The I think the lineup was really great. I remember LCD. Yeah, yep, LCD. Did one of their first reunion. Yeah. LCD. Um, but coming back to your other people, that yeah, was great. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember. But I'm um, coming back to your question. I think for me, the the biggest difference over the years has been my confidence okay and um i think i just i just grew into the role of you know being a front man of a band um and and playing with it and enjoying it and actually the the, the fact that it puts me so much out of my comfort zone because i would still see myself more as a producer rather than a performer Mm -hmm. um the fact that it still like pushes me out of the comfort zone maybe a few years ago i i didn't like that and now i that's the fact that's the one thing that i like about it because it's it's the contrast of you know being in my studio and um you know having full control over the music of course and then being on a on a on a festival stage or on a on a on a theater tour in the U.S., it's that contrast that's so um, you know interesting about what I do because I I wouldn't want to be just a producer sitting in the studio and I also wouldn't want to be a singer only you know performing. It's it's always it's always I can always take things from one of these you know areas to the other. And that contrast is just still so so interesting to me. And um, yeah, I don't know. With every two, I try to 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 focus on slightly different thing. I think Polydon, the Polydon's tour, was uh, a bit more about the 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 um, the band sound, so a bit more about the dynamic of like real drums also because the record kind of needed that yeah and on this tour like the the, the stage production is a bit more it's hard to describe but a bit more electronic and a bit more um, um i don't know there's more production elements that makes it a bit more uh, scenic i mean okay. it's hard to explain because it's sure. like um it's 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 all still like in preparation and like but um i guess the bottom line is like every kind of campaign it's it's fun to me to to evolve the live show into like a different chapter and um yeah i guess i guess at the same time i try to you know just keep the spirit of what like a roosevelt show is you know i i i don't want to change it uh, too much because it's um, you know in the end it's it's kind of I don't know what 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 makes this project what it is and um, yeah I think I think on this tour it will be like a good balance of like yeah like a fresh perspective also with like new production elements um, also you know just being able to choose from four albums now yeah. makes it that has to be you know, makes difficult. it more of a it is difficult, but it's also like it gives me the freedom to to create like different chapters in the live show and to okay. almost like a the almost like a um I don't know like a you know when I play Montreal now I kind of also play other songs from that area yeah. in 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 the in the same part of the set just to make it this like kind of special moment. Um, and I don't know, just just 
having this like 10 year discography it's just so fun to to create these little moments in the live show you know i agree it's like you can pull out pull out the old stuff for the fans and obviously play with the new stuff and see what happens it's a special thing to not have to play the same set list over and over even though i'm sure your production is very synced up to the to the set list itself but that's a whole nother story yeah i mean it is synced up but um just by having a live band you can still like you know create your own dynamic and and make make each live show um the way that you want it to be like i realize we always play different if we play it like an electronic festival right then you know let's say like a like a like a small club show in a in a, in a club where normally you know rock music is is more happening it, it all informs how we play and and how the how the show um comes together in the end nice i love that um i i have a couple more questions for you from from what I understand, the album's title "Embrace," I'm pretty sure it stems from you recently turning thirty. Is that correct? Making um, it's, different life realizations, things along those lines. I mean, it's got to do with that. I think what I talked about earlier the the the, the kind of process of stepping back, uh, like last winter, like the winter, you know, twenty one, twenty two. Um, that kind of the need for like a perspective and to to reflect on it i think that has to do with me turning 30 in the pandemic sure. um but i think it's just a natural evolution i mean the the first three albums i feel like i just rushed through them oh wow and um there was never really t- a time to yeah to kind of think about um i don't know what i if i still want to do it if i if i because for me it making a record also means hiding myself away for a couple months and just having no social life you know and for a minute i just thought you know and i never really had that kind of um perspective on it for a minute i thought if i yeah if it maybe would be good for me to to step back for a while but like i said earlier as soon as those demos came and that's that's why the title why the title embrace also came together as soon as those those demos came i just realized i want to embrace embrace uh uh, yeah this this thing that i have and just the 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 i saw suddenly i saw the value of having found my you know in general my thing in life but also my sound and i guess that's also why this album Mm -hmm still connects to like um kind of my signature sound and that doesn't run away too much from it that also you know that's also why the title embrace was really fitting in the end mm-hmm. um yeah i think i think turning 30 has to do with it but i i wouldn't see it too much as like a, this this huge um i don't know a, this huge milestone or whatever like I know when I turned 30, I was like underwhelmed by, 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 by how much it means to me, yeah. you know. I just turned 30 last month, so I get it. It was just another day in the year. Yeah. <laughs> so no big deal. Yeah. Um, Which so, is a good realization, I guess. Exactly. You know, you're, you're, you're doing your thing. You're successful. Who needs to put numbers in an age? It's no big deal. Um, yeah. So, so far there have been five singles released. I want to know, is there an unreleased single that you're most looking forward to people hearing uh, once the record actually goes live? Oh yeah, there are a few moments on the record that um, that I think also tell the story a bit better what this record is about. Because obviously for the singles, you... You do want the ones that you know have the choruses and have the sure. melodies and have the hooks but um you know when i when i when i what i also said earlier when i say this album feels a bit more like a mixtape and i allowed myself a few more things here mm-hmm. you know those things will come across mostly through the ones that are not singles so far okay. there's a um 
there's one track called Lake Shaw that you, you've probably heard because you heard the albums uh, already. Sure. But, um, right. It's it's definitely like a moment that you know I, I I'm I'm kind of proud of and and I I wouldn't have done something like like that, even like two three years ago. Nice. Um, and yeah, it just feels like I listen to like a lot of stuff like Frank Ocean while I did the record and. In the beginning, I I think I listened to stuff like that because I thought it was so far away from my own music because I like to I like to listen to okay. stuff that's not too similar to my own music while I while I record. And then I think at some point when I was driving to the studio, I was like, I should just try something like that. Like I should try <laughs> something so stripped down. Um, like I'm, I'm talking about the the blonde record mostly, uh, I figured, especially the yeah. moments where there's like, yeah, especially moments where there are like no beats and it's just kind of a synthesizer and yeah. his vocal and you feel like, you feel like you're kind of in a room with him together. Exactly, it's very and, intimate. Um, yeah, it's super intimate, and I feel like, um, I still love like my sound, whatever that is, mm -hmm. like you know, kind of my signature sound. But it's it's always kind of uh, uh, kind of a kind of a filter. I felt like that you that you put on the lyrics, and I just wanted this one track where it's like where all this is kind of stripped away, and just kind of an experiment with um, how would it feel if all these elements that I usually put in a song just wouldn't be there. Um, yeah, so Lake Shaw is one. Uh, there's more like a house track called Realize, uh, which I'm also pretty, pretty proud of and pretty happy with. Sure. Yeah, so there are definitely a few moments that I can't wait, can't wait for, for fans to hear on the record. I think they're going to love the whole thing. Um, my, my last question for you here is, it's basically for the person that is going to discover you from this interview, what is an opening message that you'd like to say to them before they listen to your music for the first time? Um, wow, that's a really hard question to answer. Um, I think I had this, I had this thought, and we also touched on that earlier. I had this thought when I was starting to do the first demos to actually have a team of like engineers and, and, and people on this record and like a lot of, um, you know, session players. Sure. I had this thought of, do, of doing that um, as, a, as, a, as a new kind of thing. And then, then I realized that, you know, like I said earlier, that how important the mixing and playing everything myself is for me. And I think, um, I kind of underestimated the value of yeah. of everything coming from me. And again, not because it's like the best ever, but just because everything on this record is so intimate. And even the even like how loud the snare is and spin the track, <laughs> sure. you know, it, it it's it's all it's all kind of my decisions just because I um kind of created it. And I think in I don't want to say that um you know it's it's better because of it but it's definitely especially in like pop music now where everything's kind of really constructed with like 20 different songwriters and producers on each track Seriously. um <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely realized it's like a, it's like a unique thing to do that and um if you yeah if someone wouldn't know my music i would definitely um you know just yeah kind of see that as like a unique value you know nice. um and something I'm, I'm still really kind of proud of just just putting everything together myself very cool i think that's a great answer and i want to thank you so much again for taking the time it really means a lot please let me plug oh cool, yeah it was my pleasure yeah i want to plug your album one more time before we wrap up here so for everyone out there if you didn't catch it first time around the record is called embrace it will be officially released on September 22nd, but I also urge everyone to listen to everything Roosevelt has ever put out because it's just fantastic music in general. And um, yeah, 
thank you so much. This has been an awesome conversation. Oh, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate the, the, the support. You're and, very welcome. Um, yeah. All right. You should, come, you. Uh, you should all come to, uh, to see the tour. I plan on it. I will be there at one of the dates. Uh, it'll happen, I promise. Amazing. <laughs> I'm excited to see it.